Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, the main focus, as Samantha said, is about um, security monitoring and specifically on uh, security information and event um, manager monitoring. Um, that's SIM technology. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. From an agenda perspective, um, we've got 40. This, we've got the schedule for about 45 minutes. I'm hoping we've got some time for questions after. Um, please feel free to send in questions as we go through this. Um, Samantha can interrupt me as we uh, as I walk through these slides, and um, as needed, she can. Uh, we can pop in with some questions. So uh, from an agenda perspective, we're going to start by framing some things, talk about um, what a cybersecurity framework is, some of the importance of detecting um, uh, certain things in your environment. Uh, in the second section, we're going to talk about what detection actually looks like. And then lastly, we're going to close things out talking about simplifying security management. Um, so if you've if you've sat on one of our maybe our monthly security webinars, which if you haven't before, I absolutely recommend them. Bruce does a really good job of uh, talking through the latest threats and and uh, what we're seeing in customer environments and in the industry at large, um, and how those things are being mitigated. But if if you've sat those before, if you've seen one of our security presentations before, um, you might have heard us talk about the NIST cybersecurity framework, um, and the NIST cybersecurity framework and, and cybersecurity frameworks in general are a, just a way of sorting and organizing your approach to cybersecurity. NIST is not the only framework, of course. Um, other uh, folks like HIPAA will have one and um, uh, PCI and, and other kind of regulated ones. We, uh, we tend to align with NIST primarily because it's not focused on a specific industry. Um, it's something that's applicable uh, to uh, all of our customers and um, really all of those other uh, frameworks mentioned, they can really all kind of map to each other pretty easily. So they're all reinforcing similar similar principles. Um, what NIST does is NIST breaks a, a, a cybersecurity into five different components. Um, one, the first one is identify. And identify is about uh, one, identifying kind of threats to your environment, but also identifying internally um, things about your own organization, like who are the people in my organization that if they were compromised would um, be the most problematic? Um, who are, what is the data in my organization that I need to treat as the absolute most sensitive? And for some organizations, especially if you're not regulated, it's going to be kind of hard to figure out what that um, data is. You know, maybe it's HR data, maybe it's financials or um, information on your employees. But uh, if you're in a regulated industry, you definitely know what that, that data is. Uh, the protect stage is something that we've been doing um, for for a long time, right? That's antivirus. That's making sure um, you're doing basic system hardening, like patching or or um, basic permission structures. Um, so the protect stage is something that everybody I think is familiar with. Um, detect, detect and respond are going to be the areas where we really talk about today. Um, and we we have detect at the center of this this bow tie for a reason here. Um, but detect is all about um, how are you determining whether or not you've been breached, right? Um, or whether or not there's a security incident. Um, you know, we can go through all these protection measures, but uh, really, we, how how are we determining um, when we actually have a problem? Uh, we're Hey, Adam, I think we lost you there for a sec. Um, audio seemed to be disconnected. All right, well, Adam, try and figure that out. We're gonna get a guest speaker in real quick. Bruce Ward would like to has a moment to speak for a little sure. bit. Um, yeah, now that Adam's uh, while well, Adam's working on the mute issues, we've got uh, the NIST cybersecurity framework. Uh, you know, is just a basis for a good discussion. I think, uh, as Adam mentioned, we're going to focus primarily on the detection and response today. Um, SIM systems are very good at aggregating a lot of data 
uh, from a lot of detection engines we have, uh, whether those be antivirus consoles, uh, server consoles, firewall consoles, um, and the goal is each of those consoles has their own detection capability, and who has the manpower and bandwidth to be looking at what we've seen is an average sometimes of 20, 30, 40 consoles within an average environment. So um, oftentimes the console aggregation is a big piece of this. So we'll, uh, as Adam returns, we'll, uh, we'll continue on with the presentation, but I think that'll be a big portion of it. Samantha, were there any questions in the queue? No, we don't have any questions at this time. So if anybody has any, feel free to type them in. Um, I'll be happy to answer those for you. Sims in general are, uh, you know, oftentimes, I guess, our our positioning on it from a uh, uh, security perspective is twofold. Uh, one is in environments where they'd like to go after simplification, kind of the console consolidation model that we were just talking about. The other one is from a regulatory perspective. There are many compliance frameworks that are going to say, you must aggregate all of your logs. You must keep them for one year. You must... Um, you know, be alerted through a centralized console or SIM system. Um, and, and it's for those you must situations where people are like, okay, what SIM am I going to choose? You know, there's a lot out there. They're relatively expensive. They're difficult to manage and, and uh, set up and operate. And so our SIM as a service uh, effort was really born um, from that need for organizations to meet the obligation, regulatory obligations or to meet their simplification obligations. Um, and then, you know, if for those two reasons, and then uh, obviously just as a security provider for our customers, uh, it's logical for us to be operating a SIM and, um, you know, with our 7 by 24 operations and things of that nature. So, you know, those are just kind of for a little background as to why we're in this industry and uh, why you might not want to be. Uh, those are, you know, just laying things out there. That's the truth of the matter. So. I will say um, the other aspects of the uh, presentation, you know, Adam certainly when he returns can re uh, move this along. Um, but um, the uh, the service that we run also has um, a security operation center services. So security operation centers are the, you know, the juggernauts of the industry from the, uh, for every security issue, there's people, process, and technology. Um, the technology, uh, we're kind of uh, footing on behalf of our customers, if you will, by running the operation. Um, and we also have process for reacting to, you know, level one through level 10 incidents. So every incident is assigned a priority. Uh, some of these things Adam will be showing. And then uh, from the people perspective, there's ourselves, which are actually uh, responders, uh, initial responders to incidents. Um, but for deeper technical analysis and so forth, you have people that are uh, uh, operate out of what's called a security operations center or a SOC. And uh, we leverage those services from a third party for that uh, because they're uh, better equipped to handle and respond to uh, multiple signals within an organization uh, to handle that event. So. All right, awesome. And we did have one question come through. Um, Someone was wondering, how long have we been offering the SIM as a service? Um, SIM as a service, I'm uh, trying to recall, it's been at least four years, and I'm wondering if it's five. Um, uh, four, uh, four or five years, I guess, would be the general answer. Um, one of the, uh, from what we found in the industry when kind of going out and competing against, you know, uh, usually we're competing against people doing it themselves. Uh, and um, find to compete that way. People are uh, people are finding that SIM solutions are pretty expensive, and I think one of the um, advantages of our turnkey offering is that um, is that it's relatively inexpensive. Um, from a uh, we we have there are a few limits with regards to um, uh, to how much data uh, can be put in there. But a lot of SIM solutions will charge uh, by the amount of data, and really that isn't the model that we're charging for. We're looking at um, usually to get started. It, it, I guess it's just a less expensive proposition um, to operate under our SIMs as a service. Uh, 
And it looks like Adam's back. So we do have two more questions. Um, and Adam, maybe you can answer these as well. Um, which SOC services is being utilized um, for the SIMSA service? Adam, that would probably be a good one for you to uh, to manage if uh, if your audio is back. So I, I, I could tell you, uh, I guess as an answer to that question, we're using a US-based um, uh, service called Stratison, uh, who provides a lot of SOC services for many um, SaaS-based um, SaaS based SIM solutions. Okay, awesome. Um, and then the final question we have is, uh, can you go over the components covered in SIM as a service? Um, not sure if Adam was planning on talking about that, but maybe very lightly give um, an idea of what we'll be discussing. Or yeah, what is can you repeat that? Yeah, what um, was that question again? Uh, can you go over the components covered in SIM as a service? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Adam will have that here as part of the presentation. We've got uh, you know one of I guess three or four things that I think of as uh, for a SIM. Um, First of all, first and foremost, uh, log aggregation. So um, collecting and um, having agents that are responsible for collection of uh, logs from backup, antivirus, wireless access, uh, controllers, active directory, firewall, um, servers. Usually what we're not seeing is uh, today is SIM solutions that are actually going out and collecting information from workstations. Outside of that, most other devices, uh, log aggregation is kind of one of the primary activities. The second is um, obviously uh, notification and alerting, right? So categorization of alerts, um, determining what um, type of event may be occurring within uh, the devices it's able to monitor. A third area is, um, is correlation. So looking at events that might be occurring in Active Directory as well as with uh, um, Active Directory, as long as with with wireless or possibly with your firewall, and saying, "Hey, you know what? There's a common thread. I am able to see you, Adam." So the third okay. item is just kind of a common thread along all all three of them. Uh, so for correlation, so correlation, aggregation, and notification, I would say are the three elements of a SIM solution and kind of what it should be doing. Now we are seeing other areas come on board. Uh, there is. Uh, you know, deeper analysis techniques that are being used for items that are occurring in Active Directory and so forth, um, for user uh, user and behavior analytics, if you will. Um, some of those things are coming into SIM solutions now. Um, so those are things we're monitoring and being mindful of and making sure that our solution uh, represents some of the best in the industry for our customers. Adam, right. if you're back, uh, you know, we've fielded a few questions and I uh, think we're kind of at a stage point where we continue on. Thank you, Bruce. I'm dialed in via cell phone now, so uh, as long as the signal doesn't go out, I guess uh, we are back on track. Um, okay. So uh, thank you for covering off on some of that stuff, Bruce. Uh, but as mentioned, uh, the detect and the response phase are um, really what we're, we're kind of focused on with a, a SIM solution. Um, and then lastly, it's the recover stage, which is, is about having a disaster recovery plan, having reliable backups to, to fall back on, um, and making sure you know uh, what you're supposed to be prioritizing. Um, from the, uh, you know, which, which stage is most important, I think that uh, can kind of differ from uh, based on the industry that you might be in. Um, but uh, obviously, we believe that detect is something that's been overlooked for, for far too long, and, um, and that's really what we're focused on with. Uh, this in discussion today. Um, one thing that I'm going to I'm going to go over real quickly here. Um, so the intrusion kill chain is something that's a, adapted from kind of a military mindset of looking at um, military strategy and, and attacks um, and and kind of pushing that into the cyber world from the stage of um, you know uh, of folks doing reconnaissance, identifying their victims to kind of launching the full on attack. I think that that's um, much simpler put in, in this kind of a diagram here, uh, something that, that you might have seen before on the anatomy of a cyber attack. Um, and something I'll emphasize here that probably happens um, right at or before stage one of uh, exploiting a compromise and a conversation we have a lot with 
uh, organizations, particularly smaller organizations in unregulated industries, is why is somebody going to attack me? And, and the biggest thing to get across is that, um, one, you've got systems connected to the internet, uh, and you've got email addresses. Uh, at, at, um, hackers are able to be extremely um, indiscriminate about who they target. There are scanning tools that basically call the internet looking for devices that have vulnerabilities, devices that are touching the internet, that have ports open that probably shouldn't be open. Um, it's, not, it's not at all about who your company is um, or who you are as an individual. You exist, um, you're touching the internet, and so you are a target. Um, same with anybody with, a, with an email address, right? If, they're, if we're talking about things like phishing and business email compromise, um, you, you just exist, and, and that is why you are a target. So uh, from an anatomy perspective, uh, we, uh, and it, it all starts with exploiting a compromise, right? If a user who clicks on a link they shouldn't be clicking on or gets credentials away that they, they shouldn't be giving away, um, or it's, uh, you know, a, a bug in a, a system, an unpatched vulnerability that is uh, opening up in, in that kind of initial um, compromise to the environment. Uh, from there, it's all about reconnaissance and further exploitation. So these are some of the things that we're looking for and, and, and the, the theme that Bruce was talking about before is kind of monitoring for, right? There's going to be unusual activity happening that, um, you know, to an individual user or to a, even an individual administrator that's not looking for these kinds of things might not be picking up on. But uh, the kinds of reconnaissance activities are things like, Okay, they've got access to this one machine in the network now. Now they're trying to move laterally across the network and um, kind of probe for other vulnerabilities they can find. Maybe they've got, um, you know, uh, their ERP system or their, their financial system that they want to be able to access. Um, it's all about kind of moving laterally. Um, one, trying to just get access to other systems, but two, trying to get access to other credentials um, that, that might be higher up. So maybe they've got an individual um, uh, that, that's maybe lower in the permission structure, but trying to, to move laterally and, and all the way um, kind of covering their tracks as well. Um, and then finally, uh, that, that last stage is launching the attack, and this is where uh, too often organizations are finally learning that they have been breached, right? So maybe it's ransomware, and so maybe that, that is showing itself as um, the ransom demand is when they fi finally figured out they've been breached, or it's you know, data exfiltration, or it's, uh, if it's business email compromise, maybe it's sending that email um, to your client to, to make your demand for money. Um, so all of these things are uh, uh, is, is part of the anatomy and, and what we see. Oops. Real quick. Um, so dwell time is, a, is something you may have learned about before, but this is, this is why this topic is so important and why the detection discussion is so important. Um, dwell time is the amount of time it takes for an organization to discover a threat in their environment and remove that threat. So that is the amount of time that uh, attacker has in the environment. And um, I'll show you some numbers here in a second, but obviously the more time an attacker has in the environment, the more damage they can do, the more um, systems they can exploit or different types of attacks they can engage in. Um, so from a statistical perspective, and keep in mind, we'll show you the, the overall numbers in just a second, too. Um, average dwell time for ransomware, which is a shorter-term attack, is really about getting in um, and, and getting out and making your demand for money. The less time an attacker spends on that, the, the more profitable they're, profitable they're going to be. And so the average time for ransomware to be in the um, – for an attacker to be in that environment for a ransomware attack is about 43 days. Um, so that's a, that's a long time, a few weeks, where they're spending in the environment uh, learning about the different systems, probably looking for the backups, um, which they can then go and delete right before they make their ransomware attack. Um, and so that, that's uh, dwell time on that. Uh, for average dwell time, and I, I can share these um, statistics as well, average dwell time for non-ransomware attacks um, uh, two years, really, and we've seen this in other organizations, too, where in that time span of two years, um, and, and ultimately, um, you know, the attack might be a ransomware attack, or that might be one of the attacks they make, but in the time span of two years, there's a lot of stuff going on. They could be taking data out. They could be using some of that data to go attack some of your customers or, or some of your partners that um, you've gleaned information from, um, 
or uh, in some of the more dangerous scenarios, continuing to build and move across the environment, gaining access to you know higher level uh, and, and higher um, uh, credentials, and eventually doing such damage as um, you know uh, creating new GPOs and and making system level adjustments to permissions and, and creating new accounts that are uh, really ingrained and making it a lot harder to remove. So that's really why dwell time is, is important. Um, and it's important to have detection in place. So a few questions you might be asking, and, and we've certainly heard people ask before, um, why did my traditional AV solution stop this? Uh, one of those reasons um, is, well, traditional AV solutions are very reactive in nature. Um, so, uh, you know, it, you might see this in your own AV client, right? Um, how those work is that Symantec or whoever um, is looking for attacks out in the wild and they are, um, as they see things, they are applying a signature to it. And they're saying, okay, we see this, this is what this um, application looks like. Um, and uh, this is, uh, this is now all of our endpoints are going to be able to recognize this, right? So they have to see it first. Um, so that, that's where we're in one way that those traditional AVs stand um, uh, kind of fall short when it comes to stopping uh, things like uh, ransomware or, or just any kind of breach. Um, next gen and antivirus solutions also can kind of fall short, though they, they can be better in some respects. Uh, they aren't relying on definitions, but they are, um, they are relying on um, you know behavioral uh, analysis of different applications that are running on there. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's really about having layered security. And a SIM is, is a big part of that, especially on, on the detection and the response front, because um, there are going to be uh, systems that are designed to get around um, specific security measures. And the more layers that you have, or at least the more, um, uh, if you've kind of invested in, in having uh, strong layers and, and kind of broader security, um, then that leaves you be more protected overall. Uh, moving into the detect discussion, I know I, uh, you uh, kind of touched on some of these things um, already as well. But um, some things to think about is you know, how are you sorting out normal activity from authentic activity today? So um, I talked about somebody compromising credentials and maybe moving across a network and moving laterally. How do you know if that's uh, you know, a regular user or if it is indeed somebody who's compromised credentials and is now behaving as that individual and what systems do you have in place for that? Uh, additionally, you know, how do you collect information? So um, You've got um, information coming from your firewall. You've got information that's being logged by each of your uh, your computers, your core switches, uh, your cloud services. How are you collecting all of that um, information uh, and to be able to even analyze it? And of course, how is that information being correlated? It's just a big pile of data. How are you handling that today? Uh, it's really those logs and that information hold um, uh, the answers to what is happening in your entire environment. Um, so this has kind of been defined already, I think, but um, a SIM is really about collecting um, that all that information from those devices and, and uh, then analyzing and contextualizing that data as it comes from various devices. And um, of course, the big thing is correlating that data to be able to alert and, and um, allow you to start your incident response plan as soon as possible um, based on the data that's coming into all these various devices. So kind of graphically, how a SIM works is, uh, and, and how we, we do it with our customers, is we we point to all this log information, the logs from the firewall, the logs from a web server, or maybe from our domain controller, um, logs from maybe a core switch, um, and we point those at our, um, at our SIM that's going to then look at all of these, and it's going to start um, doing correlation. Um, from an alerting perspective, there's really two ways that this happens. One is, um, okay, we've got this log coming in from, you know, your firewall. It's showing that, you know, somebody is just hammering on the firewall with credentials that are, are incorrect. Um, and maybe this person is also in um, Russia or is in China. Um, and that by itself, just from that system, can raise a, a high severity alert. 
But I, I think the more powerful piece is the, the correlation aspect. So um, let's say we see somebody logging into the firewall. Um, you know, they're coming in over the uh, over the VPN. That's great. Maybe they even use um, multi-factor in this case. Um, uh, or maybe it's, it's just uh, not multi-factor protected, but somebody's coming in through the firewall. Um, but then uh, within kind of the same time span there, we also see somebody logging into a network computer that's maybe on-prem um, or logging in against a local uh, domain controller. Uh, and then you have an instance of why is this person logging in through VPN as well as being logged in um, through, through this system too, and that's something two events by themselves that would not raise a red flag that when correlated are going to, to raise a high severity alert. Uh, and then the, the question, of course, is we talked a little bit about ransomware earlier, um, is uh, what, what solutions and in what ways do, uh, does a SIM help with ransomware? Um, and again, I'm going to, to emphasize one, a, a, a multi-layered approach that we talked about before. Um, there are, there are um, multiple layers in which uh, ransomware can uh, help be noticed and addressed. But the big thing when it comes to the SIM, uh, one is mass file deletion, and that name is a little bit of a misnomer. It's really mass file change, too. And so um, when a uh, ransomware attack is launched, when those files are being encrypted, they're really being overwritten, and, and the encryption key is being applied to them. That's a mass file change, right? And so that's one of the things that's going to kick off a high severity alert in the sim. And that's, uh, and of course, this is where the importance of your incident response plan comes into play as well, right? So who's getting that alert? Who's able to respond to it just as soon as possible? Because this alert here means that the attack is, is happening. Um, so, so that's one method in which um, the this, this sim is helping. The other method is uh, traffic to known bad IT addresses. And so um, obviously during, um, um, a cyber attack, um, especially one involving, uh, you know, a piece of malware, uh, the, the software is going to go back and try to talk to command and control servers. And so um, as that traffic is being seen, and this is kind of the importance of, of also tuning um, uh, a, a SIM, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and, and making sure that you're adapting to new threats in the environment. Um, and so uh, watching for traffic to known bad IPs is important because, hey, you've probably got a piece of software that shouldn't be on the, in the environment talking. And that's something that can catch even before, um, you know, the ransomware attack is, has launched. Um, so, uh, so the DFARS requirement, making sure that, uh, you know, it's throughout the supply chain um, that uh, folks are taking security um, Seriously, and they have security measures in place, right? That's on, that's on the, the regulatory side still, but it's but we are seeing it pushed down to smaller vendors. Um, just in the open kind of marketplace, I think Target's a really good example of this. So Target, obviously, the breach was a few years ago now, um, four or five years ago even, um, and uh, the way that they were breached it was through one of their vendors, their HVAC vendor. Something that you, uh, you know, a vendor that you may not think a lot about, but they had access to the target network. They were breached, and uh, therefore, target was breached. And so now, larger companies are pushing down on their vendors, who in turn have to push down on their vendors. So everybody really is, is being pressured to raise their security standards. And um, a, a sim is uh, a, a sim is a very important part of that. Okay, and then uh, kind of the last few slides uh, that we have here uh, are in regards to simplifying security management. I'm going to address that in a, a three different stages here. So responding to threats, management of the SIM platform, which I've talked about a little bit, and then um, you know completing the security picture and, and what that looks like. Um, so for responding to threats, we talked about this a little bit, but a SIM absolutely takes 24 by 7. Um, guidance, it's, and I'll talk about what our service is in a little bit, and now Bruce mentioned it as well. It absolutely takes 24 by 7 security attacks. Uh, can happen at any time. They frequently happen, especially um, ransomware attacks, um, but any cyber attack frequently happen on nights, weekends, holidays. Um, we, we see it all the time on, you know, we obviously get pulled in a lot um, to, to organizations 
um, when they need assistance um, with these types of things, and it's just a common denominator, Friday 4.30, 5 o'clock hits, um, or Friday evening, so that the ransomware, whatever the attack is, has the most amount of time to do damage before um, it is picked up on, say, Monday morning or after a holiday or whenever they think the most people are out. So absolutely important to be monitoring this 24 by 7. That's what our team does. Um, and obviously, when you're talking about monitoring 24 by 7, it is important to have a team because you're not going to have one person doing it. Um, and you're going to have multiple people multiple people who need to be um, trained in, in managing the SAM and responding to threats. Um, and right along with that is the incident response team. So um, really, every organization should have an incident response plan, which I'll talk about in just a moment, but, the, but it establishes an incident response team, and, and um, that includes not only your technical people, it includes people in the business as well. Um, what role does uh, you know client relations need to take if there's a breach that compromises client data? There needs to be communication, um, and so really uh, having an incident response team is, is important. Um, and then lastly, the incident response plan. Um, again, w you know we have a run book that we run for for our customers, but it's also important that our customers have an incident response plan that we can integrate into and be a part of that incident response team. Because um, you know we are we are a component and we are the technical side and we're watching the, the security side of things, um, but there's a lot more that goes into it and making sure that everybody knows their role and um, you know what happens if there is a um, a ransomware attack at 2 a.m. Who's responding? What is what are the response practices? What are people um, permitted to do? Are we shutting things down? Who are we sending someone on site? Um, so all of these elements are important to have. Uh, and of course, um, these are all part of our, our Pulse Alarm service, uh, which is our 24 by 7 uh, security monitoring, alerting, response. That's our managed SIM service. Um, so that's one component of that service. Um, all those those pieces are um, included. Um, on to managing the SIM platform. So I've, I've talked about this a little bit um, in, in pieces throughout. So. Of course, there's updates, right? Just like any piece of software, um, there, there's updates. So if you're going to be managing some platform, you have to know it well enough. You have to be able to, to update that, update the OS, and make sure that um, all those things are being patched, new new features are being pulled in. Um, and, and again, that, that also, I'll talk about tuning in just a second, but that also has to do with, um, you know, identifying new threats or there's new, um, uh, there's new, you know, the rise of the cloud and things like that, that we need to be able to start accounting for different devices and different um, threat vectors that we can monitor. Um, and then there's uh, analysis. So, uh, of course, uh, SIM is great. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, the, it's, when it's well-tuned, it's going to throw us a lot of really good information and alerts. There's also a lot of reports in there that require somebody who knows what they're doing to look at those um, on some type of a regular basis to be able to understand some things that maybe weren't risen to the level of a uh, you know a high severity alert, but maybe it's something that we should look at and make sure we, we uh, have our arms around it because it's trending in a, a direction we don't necessarily like. Um, and then lastly is tuning. Um, you know, like any system, any monitoring system, you need to keep uh, tuning this. One of the one of the reasons is just um, you know correlation between devices and, and different types of information being thrown can change. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, the we need to be able to get good information out of this without being too noisy because a noisy system is going to um, kind of uh, just become white noise essentially. Um, and so uh, the regular tuning helps us to be able to identify new threats, uh, make sure we're kind of up to date with that landscape, uh, and continue to make the, the tool useful. Um, and again, this is all part of our, our service, um, in addition to, to just management of the platform, like tuning and updates, um, where our team is reviewing on a weekly basis um, the, the reports that are coming out, making sure there's trending items that uh, there aren't any trending items, or if there are trending items, we're getting on those quickly and, and understanding um, why certain things might be showing up. And then in terms of completing the security picture, um, something that, that our team does as, as part of the service uh, is quarterly external vulnerability scan. So uh, obviously these can be run separately as well, but understanding where your vulnerabilities are. 
uh, if, we, if we go back to that, um, to our anatomy of a cyber attack, that first step there is exploiting a vulnerability. Um, and so making sure that uh, we're doing some regular review um, in the form of vulnerability scans and otherwise to make sure that the uh, systems that we have don't have any known vulnerabilities. Certain ports are closed or, or certain levels of patching are applied um, and, and all of that stuff. And that's all stuff that, that we handle as part of that, um, that service. And then lastly, separately from this service, but still, again, a, a part of the big picture is having a layered security um, model and thinking about, you know, from starting at the bottom and moving up there, how are you being protected? Your users, are they, are they um, going through cybersecurity awareness training? Um, are you watching their, their identities at the workstation level? Are those patched? Are we doing endpoint protection? Um, and moving up to the server, the network, and then um, kind of the cloud elements, you know, what, what's going on in our Office 365 tenant? Is there suspicious activity? Um, and uh, generally, how is our internet traffic? Where is it going to? Is there suspicious activity um, from machines on and off the network? Um, so, uh, again, that all kind of works together into to kind of completing the picture. Um, from a, a what's next perspective, we're going to open it to questions here again shortly if there are any additional ones. Um, but some things I, I can kind of point you to as, as follow-on steps, and hopefully this information was useful to you. Again, I apologize for some of the technical issues, and uh, I'm sure that Bruce was able to uh, put on a good show while I was uh, offline. But um, uh, some things that can help continue the conversation. One, we have free external vulnerability scans that we run for our clients. That's going to be run against um, your external facing IP addresses. We're going to spit out a report and, and kind of go through it with you of, um, you know, what are some of the high priority things that we're seeing um, that could easily be, uh, you know, exploited by a, a cyber attacker. Um, so that, that, that's one piece. Um, the other component uh, service that we have, we do have a security um, kind of one day engagement that involves. Uh, Sitting down, looking at data like things from an external uh, and an internal vulnerability scan, but also talking through um, your own internal processes, procedures, um, technologies, and, and how you're you're covered. Um, right? Do you have an incident response plan? If you don't, okay, then we need to start talking about developing one. What does your business continuity plan look like? Um, and, and your patch management. Uh, practice and things like that. And so um, those are all things that we kind of cover. Um, we've wrapped up into a, a one-day engagement and can assist you with. Uh, and then lastly, if, if you, you do want to move the SIM route, maybe you're on a SIM today and you like the idea of kind of simplifying and moving off and, and letting Peters and Associates be that uh, that team that's monitoring and responding to those alerts and working with your team, um, or you're, you're kind of new to it and you want to, to jump in, uh, absolutely uh, talk with us and we'll, we'll get you a quote um, for your environment. We can, we can move forward with it or we can um, do a call and kind of dig in deeper and understand um, where you have questions. Um, so if you have questions on any of those or getting started with those, reach out to um, your account manager, reach out to myself, or just info at peters.com. Um, anyone here would be happy to kind of walk you through what those, those options are. Um, and of course, here's all of our contact information if you do want to reach out about um, some of these, um, the things that we talked about. Uh, and uh, I'll hang around for your questions right now. Um, someone asked when will this recording be available, um, and I can answer that pretty quickly. Uh, we were going to be writing a blog later this afternoon, and we're going to shoot for early, um, early not next week, but the following, to have that posted online. So uh, just keep an eye out on our blogs page, and it should be posted shortly. All right, doesn't look like any more questions are coming through, so I'll close things out. Um, thanks for everybody, everybody for joining and have a great rest of your day.